Big changes are coming in the world of GLP-1s. Yesterday, Eli Lilly dropped major updates on the future of Zepbound, new terzepatide supply increases, and the game-changing retitrutide. Plus, we've got exclusive details on the analyst Q&A, insurance coverage battles, and when you can expect new obesity treatments to hit the market. This is the news you can't afford to miss. If you're new to our channel, we're so glad you found us. The Downsized is all about the real life experience of weight loss of treating the disease of obesity with GLP-1 medications. My name is Christopher Durham, and my wife and I, Lorraine, have been on this adventure together, and it has truly changed our lives. We've lost over 140 pounds using Zepbound Manjaro and compounded terzepatide. I've personally lost 94, and we're here to share what we've learned along the way. Whether you're just getting started or looking for the latest updates on these medications, you're in the right place. Every week we bring in breaking news, research, personal experiences, and industry insights so you can make informed decisions about your health and how to treat your disease. And if you haven't already, please hit that like button and subscribe. It helps us keep these conversations going and make sure you never miss an update. Now, let's get into it. This segment covers Eli Lilly's Q4 2024 earnings call that happened yesterday. Participants included Lilly's CEO David Ricks, CFO Lucas Montark, and leaders from their research development, manufacturing, and investor relation teams, as well as, of course, analysts in the Q&A at the end of the call. Eli Lilly on Thursday reported mixed results for the fourth quarter, even as demands for its blockbuster weight drug Zepbound and diabetes treatment Manjaro soared. The company's quarterly earnings topped Wall Street estimates, but sales still fell just short as Manjaro saw lower realized prices. Zepbound and Manjaro have now underperformed expectations for two straight quarters, with the company previously pointing to issues around inventory decreases among wholesalers. Despite this, revenue shot up 45% to $13.53 billion. That's huge. And the main reason, of course, is Manjaro and Zepbound. These drugs dominated sales, with Manjaro bringing in $3.53 billion, a 60% increase from Q4 2023, and Zetbound pulling in $1.91 billion in the U.S. alone, compared to just $175.8 million in its launch quarter. Lilly's total 2024 revenue hit $45.04 billion, a 32% increase from 2023. Their earnings per share skyrocketed 102% to $4.88 on a reported basis and 114% to $5.32% on a non-GAAP basis. Lilly isn't just making money. They're making history in obesity treatment. Lilly has been scaling up manufacturing to meet skyrocketing demand for GLP-1s. In 2024, the company increased production capacity by 150% and expects an additional double-digit percentage increase in 2025. They're investing billions in new facilities to ensure more consistent availability of Manjaro and Zepbound. And as many of our viewers know, uh, Lorraine and I live right outside of Charlotte, not too far away from Concord, North Carolina, where they're building one of the factories right now. On the prescription side, Manjaro surpassed 2 million prescriptions in Q4 alone, making it one of the fastest growing diabetes and obesity medications ever. Zetbound is catching up quickly with a 60% increase in new prescriptions over the previous quarter. But despite this growth, insurance coverage hurdles and affordability remain significant issues for many patients. Lilly CEO David Ricks added color saying, We strengthened our overall supply position and delivered on our production target to make 1.5 times the saleable doses of incretin medicines in the second half of 24 compared to the second half of 23. With more patients using Lilly Direct, the uptake of single use Zepbound vials increased. David Ricks acknowledged in previous earning calls that wholesaler stocking decisions are playing a big role in revenue fluctuations. Manjaro and Zepbound underperformed expectations in Q3 due to inventory decreases in the wholesaler channel following high inventory levels at the end of Q. This kind of volatile supply chain has been a persistent challenge in the Red Hot GLP-1 market, affecting both Lilly and Novo Nordisk, and of course, affecting you and I, the patients struggling to use these medications to fight our diseases. 
While Lilly blames wholesaler destocking, it's clear that wholesalers are being cautious about stocking different dosages of cold chain products in large volumes, which could explain these unexpected revenue shortfalls. Or maybe they were just out of stock. Analysts believe wholesalers may be maintaining minimum terzepatide levels due to Lilly's stable pricing strategy, as wholesalers typically benefit from price increases. Meanwhile, Nova Nordisk has faced similar struggles. They recently told the FDA that both Ozempic and Wagovi were out of shortage, and that's still under review from the Lilies Manjaro and Zetbound remain under review with the FDA. This raises important questions for patients. Is the supply really stable? And will these supply chain issues continue to impact access and affordability? Let's talk about the future. And the future looks like terzepatide, retitrutide, and orforglopron for Eli Lilly. We'll start with terzepatide, the one we know and love, because it's been a game changer in obesity, and now we're seeing beyond that. Terzepatide, which is the active ingredient in Manjaro and Zepbound, has revolutionized GLP-1 treatments, has revolutionized the treatment of the disease of obesity by targeting both GLP-1s and GIP receptors. This dual action leads to superior weight loss, and blood sugar control compared to semaglutide, which is, of course, Nova Nordisk's drugs will go via Ozempic. Ongoing studies are exploring additional indications for terzepatide, including heart failure and metabolic dysfunction associated with steatohepatitis or MASH, which could expand insurance coverage in the future. In 2025, Lilly expects to submit further applications for these new indications. Up next is retitrutide, which is touted as the next generation incretin therapy. Retitrutide is Lilly's triple acting incretin, which targets GLP-1s, GIP, and glucagon receptors. They call it the triple G. This expanded mechanism is expected to drive even greater weight loss than terzepatide. Early trials have shown up to 24% body weight reduction in 48 weeks, making it one of the most promising obesity treatments in development. Lilly plans to release late-stage trial results in 2025 with a potential FDA submission by 2026. And finally, we have orforglopron, which is an oral GLP-1 alternative. For patients who prefer pills over injections, Orforglopron is set to be a game changer. This once daily oral GLP-1 has shown weight loss comparable to injectable treatments in phase three trials. If approved, it could open the door for a broader range of patients who struggle with injections. Lilly expects regulatory submissions by late 2025 with a potential 2026 launch. The launch of these three medications could potentially give Lilly a powerhouse collection of obesity treatments that could allow them to personalize treatment across the board. So maybe you're taking a retitrutide or terzepatide early in your phase when you have a lot of uh, weight to lose. Maybe you're using an orforlopron later when you have less weight to lose. Hopefully the price could get down on the pills as they're easier to manufacture and distribute. So that whole first part really comes out of the prepared remarks that the Eli Lilly executives presented during the call. If you've ever experienced any of these calls, sometimes it gets interesting at the end, and that's when the stock analyst, all those bankers are hanging out waiting to ask questions, it's the analyst. So they have a Q&A at the end and they take a question. So let's walk through a few of the key takeaways and the market implications, and we'll actually do some of the questions. During the earnings call, analysts pressed Lilly's leadership on multiple issues impacting the company's performance and future plans. Here's a closer look at the critical questions and the answers that followed. So question number one, why did Manjaro and Zipbound underperform expectations in Q3 and Q4? These are coming from stock analysts, remember. Uh, Lilly CEO David Ricks reiterated that wholesaler inventory reductions played a significant role in the revenue shortfall. This was not due to a lack of demand, but rather an adjustment in the channel, he explained. Retailers and wholesalers are managing their working capital and adjusting their purchasing patterns. We are confident that demand remains strong. The CFO, Lucas Montark, added, we estimate that inventory decreases in the wholesaler channel impacted sales of Manjaro and Zepbound by mid-single digits as a percent of aggregate U.S. sales in Q4. Analysts remain skeptical of this explanation with some pointing to potential insurance reimbursement challenges as a contributing factor. I can only wonder 
whether the sheer cost of carrying these medications is slowing both the drug channel and the wholesaler channel from getting it. They have hundreds of thousands of dollars sometimes of medications flowing through their systems. The wholesalers might have millions of dollars flowing through their medications. It's hard to say. Combine that with cold chain challenges and the cost to do business in this GLP-1 market today is overwhelming. Perhaps, just perhaps, lowering the cost here could help everything move smoother. If indeed Lilly has ramped up its manufacturing and can deliver as many doses as necessary, then there's no reason to moderate demand by high price. There is plenty of opportunity for them to lower their prices, increase the amount the wholesalers are carrying, increase the amount the drug stores are carrying, and increase their total number of patients by making a price that's more accessible. So the next question, how does Lilly plan to ensure a stable supply of GLP-1 medications moving forward? Rick's acknowledged that supply chain volatility has been a challenge, especially as Novo Nordisk and Lilly both struggle to meet rising demand. He stated, we've invested heavily in manufacturing to ensure a constant supply of Incretin therapies, and in 2024 alone, we have increased production capacity by 150%. We expect additional double-digit percentage growth in 2025. Lilly also noted that it is expanding its production facilities to address long-term demand, including a multi-million dollar investment in new manufacturing plants. As I said, one of those is not far from where I live in Concord, North, North Carolina. Except if they really got the capacity, let's turn up the volume, let's turn down the price, and let's get it going. They got plenty of margin built into there, and they could meet their numbers in, in volume and margin. Next question, what is the company's outlook for ZetBound's insurance coverage, especially in light of the recent approval for obstructive sleep apnea? Patrick Johnson, president of Lilly Cardiometabolic Health, highlighted the importance of ZetBound's recent FDA approval for OSA treatment. He said, this is a major step in expanding insurance coverage. We are in active discussions with Medicare and private insurers, and we expect increased coverage in the second half of 2025. However, some analysts question whether Medicare will move quickly to cover ZepBound for obesity alone, noting that Medicare has been historically reluctant to cover weight loss treatments. The questions continued, what updates can you provide on Red of True Tide and how does it compare to existing GLP-1 therapies? Lilly's R&D chief Dan Skavronsky expressed confidence in Red of True Tide's triple receptor mechanism. This drug is showing remarkable potential, he said. We've seen up to a 24% total body weight reduction in 48 weeks, significantly higher than what has been observed with terzepatide. He stated Lilly expects late-stage clinical trial results in 2025 and is aiming for FDA submission by 2026. Next question, how does orforglopron fit into Lilly's overall obesity treatment strategy? Orforglopron, Lilly's oral GLP-1 candidate, has been positioned as breakthrough for patients who prefer pills over injections. They said, we believe orforglopron could significantly increase access to obesity treatments as some patients hesitate to start injectables. Phase three data is looking very promising and we anticipate a late 2025 regulatory submission with potential approval in 2026. The next question, how is Lilly addressing affordability concerns for patients struggling to access these medications? The CFO acknowledged that pricing remains a challenge. He said, we are committed to working with insurance providers, PBMs, and policymakers to expand coverage and affordability. We have also introduced patient assistance programs to help those in need. However, analysts push back with one noting, while assistance programs help many patients still face high out-of-pocket costs, does Lilly have any plans to lower list prices? To this, Ricks responded, we believe value-based agreements with payers are the best path forward rather than arbitrary price reductions. Lilly's responding to the complexity of the U.S. healthcare system. He's telling you there's so much going on that we got to keep it at a really high price because it's going to get negotiated 10 times. Now we know even at that really high price, if we believe the congressional estimate that these medications can be made for about $5 a dose, there is an obscene amount of margin built into all these medications. There is an obscene amount of profit that can still go to their pockets, to Wall Street, to innovation, to building new factories. Lilly and Ricks. 
price has got to come down. We, the American public that suffers with the disease of obesity, want to be your customers. I've been incredibly happy, incredibly happy with Zepbound and Monjaro. I've lost 94 pounds on it and I am happy to be a loyal customer, but you got to give me a price and an availability that works. I want you to be profitable but I don't want you to take advantage of the American public. Lower the prices, keep it in stock, and you will have 74% of America rushing to your door. So in closing, Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk are battling for control of the GLP-1 market, and that competition means big changes ahead. The demand for obesity medications is growing rapidly. New innovations are coming, and the fight over compounded trisepatite continues not to mention the other 600 drugs that are in development from dozens of other manufacturers that are nipping at their heels. But here's what it all means for us, the patients. We need these medications to be affordable and covered by insurance. Lilly and Novo may be making billions, but until every patient who needs these drugs can get them without jumping through endless hoops or going into crippling debt, there's still work to do. We'll keep following every development because this impacts real people like us who are using these medications to treat their diseases. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to The Downsize so you never miss an update, so you never miss us coming to you, telling you what's going on in the world of GLP-1s, giving you tips and tricks, telling you about our story, our adventure. Thank you for joining me. I'm Christopher Durham, and we are The Downsized. I'll see you next time.